Hello friends of Golf Course Quality Fertilizer. Uh, now up for our next challenge of the season of 2020 for turf, right? Uh, it looks like the next 10 days is going to be a blistering, hot, humid. So a little different than the last hot spells we've had. This one's going to be humid this time. So it does change things quite a bit. Um, and it's going to be, it says 90 today and then 90 for the next three days, then 92 for two days, then 94, then 93 as the highs. Uh, the temperatures at night is gonna get into the 60s, a couple of, they're gonna stay in the 70s, um, upper 60s, and so that's gonna prime up the, the uh, turf diseases, the main one called Pythium, and we'll talk about that in a second, uh, a lot. And so, oh man, I mean, be ready to uh, really battle and struggle and have some turf that's not looking so hot here coming really soon. So let's talk about the first thing uh, that we want to do. Um, the, the turf, anytime temperatures are above 88 degrees with cool season turf, it's literally on its way to death, death's doorstep, right? And so thank goodness we get below 88 degrees at night and stuff. Uh, but this is going to be a lot like Florida weather and we can't grow cool season grass in Florida weather. Uh, so it's going to be a tough run uh, these next 10 days. And I don't even know what's after that 10 days. It might be more 90 degree weather. So uh, our watering is going to change a little bit. It's not going to be as frequent as it was during the last hot spell that we had uh, because we're going to have high humidity. And with those high temperatures too, those stolmates, this is the pores of the grass are going to kind of close up and try to conserve water. Uh, but we're going to try to mitigate temperatures the best we can. So we talked about that syringing that we do on the turf uh, to kind of cool it down, kind of doing that in the afternoon. You know, in this case, we might have to do it multiple times during a day. Uh, on a golf course, we're running across the green sometimes three, four times a day, each green, uh, and just running a little splash of water on it. Not enough to water it, remember, but just enough to kind of get the leaves wet. Then it'll evaporate and pull the heat off just like we're spritzing our face down and we might have to do that multiple times during a day. Now I know not everybody's going to have the luxury of being able to do that. Uh, I remember on the golf courses we'd start heading out around 11 o'clock to do our first round, then 2 o'clock uh, to do our second round, and then 5 o'clock or so to do our third round of syringing to kind of keep these greens cool. Uh, so you know you might end up doing a couple times in a day where you're setting that clock on for like 10 minutes a zone or even 7 minutes a zone and just kind of letting those sprinklers go around about two times uh, and then shutting it down and moving to the next station. So we're not focusing on watering on that. We're gonna actually just do a little cool down and that might happen every day. Uh, I like to watch the turf. If it has these funky colors, then I'm gonna go ahead and start doing the syringing. That's gonna take that color away from it and keep the grass from going into a dormant stage, right? And so that's what we really wanna focus on is try to keep that grass from going dormant. We might not have the luxury to do that. And so we might have a lot of suffering. And here's the, the bad part about it is all the weeds that we don't like really love that hot weather. And so crabgrass, you know, on corners and edges might start blowing up. Uh, clover loves the hot weather. It might start really getting aggressive. Uh, if you have little pieces of clover, it might grow a lot this year. Um, and then also yellow nut sedge is another one of those summer annual weeds. It's a grassy weed that kind of grows twice as fast as your grass and a little yellowish color to it. If you pull it up, uh, and don't pull it up, but you might pull one up, uh, it's got a triangular shape uh, stem to it with these leaves kind of coming out like this, like a, some sort of a, uh, orna ornamental grass or something like that. And so if you pull those, don't pull them because it just plants like three or four. There's these little nodules at the end of the roots that will break off and end up being in the grass. So we're going to be going through a tough time, right? And so be prepared for that. I would still try to stick to the every other day watering. If it kind of gets ahead of you a little bit, when we go through the stretch, there's like a four day stretch in the middle where they're calling for 0% chance of rain. And I think that's one of the hottest stretches. You know, you might have to back up two days together, but you gotta give it that one day break. This is very important during this time because uh, melting out is gonna happen on young grasses almost certainly. So I'm sorry to tell all the people who planted grass this spring, late spring or here recently, you're probably gonna to have to do some overseeding come September uh, to try to replenish whatever has died during this hot summertime. Uh, that's just part of mother nature. Nothing we can do about it except for what do we do to fix it, right? Uh, and summer supplements are gonna end up becoming 
of situation to try to rescue our turf after this heat spell. The grass is going to look really ugly and sickly using these organic fertilizers that are not very hot but help have all these micronutrients in there to help fend off some of this hot weather and stuff. We might be using some summer supplements in some cases as well. So just keep an eye on your turf and we'll be ready for you. Um, another thing I want to talk about as far as mowing goes, all right, with this kind of hot weather, uh, I don't like to mow when it's hot anyways, but morning mowing is not ideal in this situation because if we cut it off and stress out the turf in the morning, now it goes right into that hot day, it's going to be an issue. So I want you to mow in the evenings if you can, right? So you're going to mow in the evening and probably water that next morning because we're going to open that grass up. So, uh, you know, 8 o'clock at night, get the mower out, mow the lawn, and then have a deep cycle water that next morning. That's really going to help things. And you might have to do a couple of extra little syringes after you've mowed that day too to kind of help the grass mitigate from that damage that you created with it, right? Remember, don't mow stressed turf. If it looks stressed, kick on that stuff and wait for the next day. I don't care how ugly the turf goes, do not mow stressed turf or it's going to be sitting there and a lot of us have already suffered that situation of two weeks right before it finally starts to get better and it's finally looking a little better and now here we go again right so you know it's gonna be a little tough go here coming up soon uh, well starting right now uh, it's gonna get tough uh, so morning doing that also blowing the turf my wife and this is for the the high enders right so my wife she loves to go through and she'll actually blow the turf before she mows it and kind of fluff it all up and air it out. Then she mows, then she comes back again like a crazy person that loves turf and she blows again. That's actually really great. I mean, we've fended off a lot of diseases through that last spell because of that practice. Uh, we can also get out early in the morning if we have the gumption to do so uh, and blow the turf, the dew off the turf in the morning to help dry those leaves out a little bit in the morning. We're talking surface dryage, right? Not bottom in the soil. We want the soil to stay kind of moist, but we want the leaves to stay dry. That's going to fend off those diseases that are going to come. Pythium is going to be one, right? And so those are the things we want to really think about is blowing and mowing. We always hear that going together on the golf course, you know, blowing it before and after, definitely afterwards. Morning blowing the turf to cool it down. That's not, or to get the, start to get it to dry off a little quicker. That's not a bad idea either. Um, so it's going to be really tricky for these next 10 days uh, just hold on to your shoes on that another thing is we do not want to spray any weeds during this spell either above 85 degrees not really a good time to spray cool season grasses for weeds because we'll hurt the grasses themselves uh, that being said we got a lot of people who are out there with have Bermuda grass and they got a Bermuda grass mix which is amazing nobody else can really kill Bermuda grass and cool season grass like we can uh, but those Bermuda grass spring, go nice and light on them, right? Don't get heavy with it during this real hot spell. Just kind of get those leaves wet at the top uh, and then wait for 10 more days before you go back at it again. But you might get a real good advantage this year on Bermuda grass, so be on your toes. Bermuda, zoysia grass, anybody who's trying to kill those warm season grasses out of the cool season grasses, this might be really an opportune year for you to get ahead of the ball on that situation, okay? Uh, if you have any other questions, I know it's going to be tough. Uh, but please just try not to water every day that's gonna be real bad for you you're gonna start getting little fuzzy things on the top of the turf that look like cotton you go touch them if they melt and turn into like almost like it's cotton candy uh, and that means that it's mycelia the disease you know seeds essentially and it might get really crazy uh, as far as that go we're gonna be seeing dollar spot we won't really be seeing red thread much it's almost too hot for red thread we're gonna see pythium and in some cases, we might see brown patch. I, I don't know. That's the high-end uh, nitrogen side of that. Dollar spot's going to be if you're running out of your nutrients, your nitrogen, then definitely a summer supplement's going to want to be what you use in that situation to recover that. All right? And so, hey, fingers crossed. Syringing, that's going to be your new best friend to keep these, this cool season turf cooled down. Okay? So, if you have any questions, uh, hit that like button. I love that. We see more like buttons than seven this time. Uh, and email us if you have any questions at gcqfertilizer at gmail.com. Thanks so much for your, for your listening. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. <laughs>